and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And our president of the United States, Barack Obama, uh, put LGBT issues front and center in his visit to his homeland. In spite Kenya. of the threat of the naked protest. His ancestral homeland. And we have the details on the Equality Act that was introduced in Congress last week. Who is supporting the comprehensive LGBT rights bill and who is not yet? The Boy Scouts did indeed vote to open leadership to LGBT people, but the religious exemption uh, to the new policy is, may not be enough for the Mormon church. In Texas, the high court is going to force Houston, the city of Houston, to hold a referendum on its human rights law, which includes LGBT rights, despite evidence that signatures for the referendum were fraudulent. A whole bunch of members of Congress, about 125, have called on the State Department to bar spouses of diplomats from countries that don't accept same-sex spouses of our diplomats. Tit for tat. A black minister in Georgia has attacked the church's hypocrisy on black people, but then his church backtracked. On, on gay people. Oh, what did I say? I think black people. Oh, but. I'm sorry, I meant gay people. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the chur his church uh, hierarchy backtracked on his statements. An international sports court, I had no idea there was such a thing, has ruled that high testosterone in female athletes should not automatically disqualify them from competing as females. It's quite a complicated issue. The World Health Organization reported that transgender women have a much greater chance of contracting HIV. And we're going to talk about the Greg Louganis documentary as well. We are, and the new Caitlyn Jenner show on E! But, but we start with the President of the United States, and uh, he was making his Africa trip, his first trip to Kenya, which is his ancestral homeland. As president. He's as, been there before. Yes, Before yes, he was president. Yes, as president. And, and he was warned not to talk about LGBT issues. Well, uh, well, well, well. Uh, the, b before he went, uh, the president of Kenya, uh, Kenyatta, said, we had heard that in the U.S. they have allowed gay relations and other dirty things. <laughs> so he was asked about this even before the trip, and he said, well, you know, I don't, I don't agree with him on that, do I? No, and he says he said he had been and will be blunt on LGBT issues in Kenya and Ethiopia, in spite of the fact that there was this hilarious uh, threat of a protest by 5,000 naked people in the streets of Nairobi. To, to show sex differences between peoples in case the president did not understand that. <laughs> this is a man, this is a woman. More on that later. And, and by the way, this was more... more about more than just gay people, it was about women and girls as well. It and was the about a lot of things. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but the protest did not materialize. That was canceled. And the president did go to Kenya and Ethiopia. And in Kenya, he gave, uh, he was at a press conference yes. with the, press, uh, the president of uh, Kenya. Kenya. And he was asked about uh, human rights, gay rights. Uh, he was I, asked about a lot of right. stuff. And he decided to address directly uh, the idea of human rights as it applies to sexual orientation. And this is some of what he had to say. President Kenyatta, your spouse. Similarly, with respect to uh, the rights of, of gays and lesbians, I've been consistent all across Africa on this. Uh, I believe in the principle of treating people equally under the law and that they are deserving of equal protection under the law and that the state should not discriminate against people based on their sexual orientation. And I say that recognizing that there may be people who have different religious or cultural beliefs 
But the issue is, how does the state operate relative to people? If you look at the history of countries around the world, when you start treating people differently, not because of any harm they're doing anybody, but because they're different, that's the path whereby freedoms begin to erode. And bad things happen. And when a government gets in the habit of peop treating people differently, those habits can spread. And as uh, an African American in the United States, uh, I am painfully aware of the history of what happens when people are treated differently under the law. And there were all sorts of rationalizations that were provided by the power structure for decades in the United States for segregation and Jim Crow and slavery, and they were wrong. So uh, I'm unequivocal on this. Um, if somebody is a law-abiding citizen who is going about their business and working in a job and obeying the traffic signs and doing all the other things that good citizens are supposed to do and not harming anybody, the idea that they are going to be treated differently or abused because of who they love is wrong. Full stop. And, you know, uh, the, the, the state does not need to weigh in on uh, you know, religious doctrine. The state just has to say, we're going to treat everybody equally under the law. And then everybody else can have their own opinions. All right? is uh, really hitting his stride on this issue and in, in terms of the way he talks about it. Uh, I, I, you know, he's, he's, he's just getting more completely comfortable with it and he put it in a larger context, which is what I like. I mean, uh, you know, about how people are treated and how you become, how you become a more advanced, uh, you know, uh, society by treating everybody uh, equal, equally, which is a big problem there in, in a lot of respects. I think he has evolved into this position of comfort, and I think he's proud to take this position around the world. He certainly could have been less forthright and mm -hmm. was warned to be, and he's just fed up with that kind of approach, and he's going to speak honestly. I like his affect. Mm -hmm. I like his uh, relaxed manner. Mm -hmm. I, you know, this wasn't a written speech. He wasn't pounding any podium. He's having a conversation. He was much more comfortable than when he was coming out on same-sex marriage <laughs> with uh, Robin Roberts, who had also not come out at that point. Yeah, she wasn't very comfortable. <laughs> no, but he was a little more hesitant as he found these words. He was also yes. in the middle of a re-election campaign at that time. He was, and he was clearly, well, you can see him think. Yes. And now he thinks thoughtfully and appropriately, and he chooses his words carefully. Unlike, for instance, uh, the right-wing Republicans who are coming at him now, he's very careful not to fall into the trap of their bombast. And here he is thinking about how he wants to present this. Yes, he, he thinks that uh, Republican presidential candidates that spout off and make comparisons of his Iran deal to the marching uh, Israelis to the, uh, to the ovens uh, is uh, not presidential. <laughs> so and he true. says so. Now... Uh, there he was, he was doing this standing next to the president of Kenya, uh, President Kenyatta. The reporters turned to President Kenyatta and said, so what do you think of this? <laughs> and President Kenyatta was also forthright in his opinion. So, he can give as good as he gets. Yes, yeah, so let's hear what he has to say. 
be able to speak frankly about some of these things. And the fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. It's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves do not accept. This is why I repeatedly say that for Kenyans today, the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. We want to focus on other areas that are day-to-day -day living for our people. The health issues that we have discussed with President Obama, these are critical. Issues of ensuring inclusivity and of women, a huge section of society that is normally left out of the mainstream of economic development. What we can do in terms of infrastructure, what we can do in terms of education, in terms of our roads, in terms of giving our people power, encouraging entrepreneurship. These are the key focuses. Maybe once, like you have, overcome some of these challenges, we can begin to look at new ones. But as of now, the fact remains that this issue is not really an issue that is on the foremost mind of Kenyans. And that is the fact. Yeah. So he's telling us to wait. Well, it, it would be nice if it weren't an issue, but clearly it is an issue when they have criminalized homosexuality and they arrest people and people get attacked. Uh, to say it is not an issue is disingenuous. Well, as It is not a priority for them to do anything about it, but it certainly is an issue. As, as our, our guest from Uganda, uh, Kasha Jacqueline, said, uh, what I want my government to do so I can at least advance this issue is protect me. That's a very exactly. basic thing. Exactly. And instead of attacking me. Yeah, I, I mean, we, <laughs> we have discussed incrementalism many times on this program. We're not against a, a gradual approach, but... Except uh, on our federal LGBT <laughs> rights bill. Well, we'll get More to that. More about which later. Uh, but certainly basic uh, physical safety should be a baseline uh, uh, mandatory Well, in fact, one of the, issues. Er one of the early biz parts of sympathetic coverage that we used to get before we even had protection of our rights in places like New York was when somebody was bashed or, or killed or shot or those kinds of things. The press kind of got that was a bad thing and had some sympathy for us and, and would do stories on those things. Although it does still happen. All the time and as we will discuss. But, but I really, I resent the, uh, the disingenuous nature of his comments to say uh, it's not an issue. Oh. It, it's very much an issue, right. so that is, a, that is offensive. Right. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Obama continued to talk about uh, LGBT rights as he went on on this African trip and ended up speaking to the Africa Union, which was a meeting of leaders from around the whole continent, and talked about not, the need not to discriminate on the basis of blah, 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 and who you love, your favorite category, the who you loves, and included us in that uh, statement too. Yes. And, and uh, lectured the presidents on the need to <laughs> step down before they'd been in office for 50 years. <laughs> yes. and, and certainly to promote the development of uh, women's rights and yes. economic development. So thank you, Mr. President. Yep. We don't always agree with the president, but he certainly had a good week. And we... Having a good month. And we delight in being able to show you his statements yes. at length. Makes us proud to be Americans. And let's see <laughs> well, if we... Let's not go too far. Let's say, well, I, let's see if we can get uh, the Congress to make us proud. Because yes. it, in, it's in their court now whether to deal with the Equality Act, As which we, is the comprehensive federal LGBT rights bill. We've learned more about it this week. Yes, we told you last week that it was about to be introduced, but it was uh, being introduced after we were taping last week. So now we've looked at the bill, we've heard more about it. It was uh, introduced by co-sponsors, Senators uh, Jeff Merkley of Oregon, uh, Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, and uh, Cory Booker of New Jersey uh, in the Senate and in the House by uh, Representative Cicilline of 
uh, Rhode Island. Who was out gay. Yeah. Now, H.R. And Tammy is out lesbian yeah. over so, there in the Senate. So they introduced this bill. Now, the Human Rights Campaign said, released a poll as this was being introduced saying 78% of uh, the population of the United States supports a federal non-discrimination law that covers sexual orientation and gender identity. Why hasn't it passed yet? Because the problem is that everyone thinks it already exists. <laughs> yes. So. Well, I remember in the mid-90s, people would say uh, about same-sex marriage, well, can't you do that in Hawaii? <laughs> I would say that because they sort of heard the news and uh, we did kind of win <laughs> a case there. There was something going on, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't you already uh, have that? But really, uh, as Evan Wolfson would be the first to tell us, the most important thing for us to do now to get the Equality Act passed is to talk to our family, friends, neighbors, co-workers. Congress people. Them too. Uh, about the fact that we need protection legally and that it does not exist right. on a federal level or in more than half the states. Well, let's talk about what the bill does. It, it amends the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Fair Housing Act uh, of 1968. Now, there's some... And the Equal Credit yeah, uh, there, Act? There's some controversy about this and people talk about opening up these bills so that they might be amended by bigots on the floor of the... Uh, for and affect other... Uh, uh, minority groups, essentially, or, group, or other covered groups. So there's some concern about that, but we, would, we just want what everybody else wants. Now, it, it covers actual or perceived gender identity or sexual orientation, and it expands the definition of public accommodations to include uh, retail stores, transportation services, and services, service providers, like accountants, it codifies the existing interpretation of sexual orientation and gender identity bias as sex discrimination, which has been happening at the EEOC and in some courts. And it covers jobs, housing, credit, education, and jury service. So it's, it is this big, broad bill. It also adds some protections for women that are missing in several parts yes. of the federal law. And it includes a couple of things that I think are, are bold and stunning. One, it says explicitly, this is a quote, that the Federal uh, uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act is not to be used as a defense to discrimination. Right. That is major. And it also protects uh, access by transgender people to the bathroom of their... Yes. Uh, lived gender. More about which later. Yes, exactly. But those are explicitly in this proposed law. And even in the Hobby Lobby decision, which let the uh, retailer Hobby Lobby uh, not pr pay for reproductive health services for their employees, the Supreme Court was explicit in saying, we don't mean that they can violate non-discrimination laws here, even though it was obvious discrimination against women. Exactly. And I, I thought that was disingenuous. <laughs> this is going to be my word for the day uh, for them to put that in that opinion, because clearly it was discrimination and and the decision was going to be used as a basis for discrimination more widely. Clearly. Uh, and we've seen that as as various states and localities have tried to push these religious freedoms. All right. Who's for this laws. new Equality Act and who isn't? Well, uh, there's no Republican on the bill, and there's some peak that Republicans are feeling that they don't feel that we're consulted enough in the preparation of the bill. Uh, but uh, well, that's one storyline. It's unclear whether that's really true. Uh, the log cabin Republicans, the gay Republicans, are saying, "Oh, we didn't get to read it till the night before. Our our Republican politicians were not included in writing this. It's all been a big uh, Democratic uh, thing." But uh, well, the well, the authors claim that in fact there was more uh, reaching out. Everybody had the ability to be on this, and that the Republicans don't want to be on it because they're not ready to uh, break ranks or challenge their leadership until they take a little more sense yeah. of uh, where this yeah. is going and and whether this yeah. is something that could be bipartisan. They even talked to us. <laughs> Not so, really. Well, the, the, 
Log Cabin says it's hesitant, but they won't say what their hesitation. So now they've had a chance to read it. Well, tell us what your problems are with it. And, and that is happening with a few of the civil rights groups. Most of the civil rights groups are on board, but some of them are saying, well, we need to read it, we need to study it, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's fine. That's and I'm actually a little surprised that they didn't get more of the civil rights groups on board before they introduced this. Uh, some are, some aren't. All of them have basically said, in theory, we're yes. totally for this. Yes. It's simply a question of whether this is the well, correct even, mechanism. Well, even the White House has said they're reviewing the language, and they, yeah. but they say it's a step in the right direction. The National Center for Transgender Equality says, this is the bill we've been waiting for. Well, it's the bill we've been waiting for, yes. too. Yes, and a lot of big corporations are on board. We could go down the list. HRC App is obviously doing that. Yeah, Apple, Microsoft, Dow, Dow Chemical. We are now tallying <laughs> the support of Dow Chemical. This is, I've lived to see this day. Google, I, Facebook, you Leave, name them, Levi's, Apple. Levi's, American Airlines. General Mills. Hey, General Mills. Nike. You're, hey, hey, fundamentalists out there who hate this stuff. You gonna stop eating their cereal? I don't are, think so. Are we gonna start eating their cereal? <laughs> That's true. Uh, Olson and Boys have climbed on board. Hillary has announced her support for it. O'Malley, uh, uh, the governor O'Malley, is also running for president. Uh, and Bernie Sanders. H and HRC put out another poll that said 59% of voters are less likely to support candidates who oppose it. They say. Uh, we'll see. Well, that's what they said to a pollster. Yeah, the, yes, exactly. And when it comes so, down to it, they'll still vote for Donald Trump. My, my, the, the, the tally I had was 40 Senate sponsors and 155 House sponsors yes. have more been added. Uh, not that I know of, but that was a count from uh, the original introduction of the bill. They may have more on now. But that's most of the Democrats in the Senate and the House. And the real question is how many Republicans to get signed on or we could elect more Democrats well, and I get, get them to sign I get on. a little concerned, though, when, you know, some of the groups uh, like uh, uh, LULAC, which is the League of United Latin American Citizens, say, well, we want to see, we, we we're basically supportive, but we want to see some changes. So this, there could be debate about what goes into these things. Well, look, Get Equal wants to see changes. There are a lot of people who want to see changes. This bills do get negotiated. Some want to make it stronger. Some want to make it weaker, though. Absolutely. <laughs> well, but I see the thing is this: you, the, I, I know, and I, you, you can't compromise on an equal rights bill. Otherwise, it be, doesn't yes, become equal. Yes, but that doesn't mean it can't be improved or expanded just, in ways just, that are appropriate. Yes, but what happened with the Employment Non-Discrimination Act is they kept exempting more groups of course. and adding these ridiculous religious exemptions, yes. which we cannot stand for. And I think we've established that principle. Uh, we have, which doesn't mean it can't be lost <laughs> and forgotten and trampled on. Uh, but the point is, the point is, we now have this comprehensive global non-discrimination bill called the Equality Act that has been formally introduced in Congress when a year ago the Human Rights Campaign was still pushing the horrible Employment Non-Discrimination Act which was built to allow religious discrimination across the board and one year later we have this act introduced and that is a giant leap forward and now as Tony Kushner would say, <laughs> the real work begins. Yes. I'm paraphrasing yes. angels in America. Yes. And the work, it's for all of us, folks. Uh, uh, hey, this is something every single one of you can do out there in, uh, in this country. Uh, call your members of Congress, your member of the House of Representatives, your two senators. If you don't know who they are, look them up. It's on Google. Uh, and call their offices and say, I want you to support the Equality Act, or I want to know what your position is on the Equality Act, and I want to know if you object to it, why you don't object. And if, you, and, if you, and if you've got a problem with it, I want to sit and meet with you about it. And This is America. And you could ask all candidates for office what they feel about it, including Republicans running for Congress next year, because they may win those races, and we'd like them to sign on to this. Because there's resistance out in the country. Uh, Governor Mike Pence of Indiana said, get this, remember the, the big controversy over his Religious uh, Freedom Act, which got uh, trimmed back. Um, he said, well, you know, the economy's grown so much that it may eliminate the need for a ban on anti-LGBT discrimination. 
I don't want to jinx all this growth that we're going through. Why change when things are working? Holy moly. I interpreted his statement as meaning because we have not been hurt economically by our proposal for the Religious Freedom Act, even though all the companies were mad at us last year when we tried to do that, we don't have to do a non-discrimination act because our economy is doing fine and these companies have not punished us in the way we feared they would. Well, we'll see because you know, now we've got to get the companies to continue to exert pressure on them. Well, meanwhile, the uh, mayor of Elkhart, Indiana, wants to post... Dick Moore, his name is, what? and he's a Democrat wants to postpone consideration of a non-discrimination bill for the city of Elkhart because the opposition is too great. Well, he says, I'm looking for a more comprehensive approach to a civil rights uh, act for, for our little town oh, here. Oh, okay. Well, then let's discuss what's but going on. Some people think he's being disingenuous. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. No, that's what they said. Yeah, well, let's talk about Houston then. Oh. Uh, because really, is... we want this Federal Equality Act because it would accomplish a lot, but state by state, city by city is still where the battle is too. The Texas Supreme Court ordered the city of Houston to uh, put a hold on their LGBT non-discrimination ordinance and they can't enforce it and they're overruling a 2014 ruling that found that those who collected signatures against it were fraudulent and not enough. Uh, so now, here's what it does. It forces the council to actually discuss the bill again. They passed it, but they've got to discuss it again. And if they don't repeal it, then it goes to the voters this November. This isn't, this is, is there any appeal beyond the Texas Supreme Court? Uh, probably such, not. It's such an outrage of malfeasance on their well, part. Well, uh, here's, here's their rationale. The Texas Supreme Court looked at this and they said, uh, all right, the City Council of Houston passed this non-discrimination bill. And I think it, it uh, covers everybody. It's sex and race and national origin and uh, sexual orientation and gender identity, etc. And the City Council passed this bill. And then the right wing came in and said, uh, we want to overturn this and we want a public vote on this to repeal this bill. So we're gonna go out and collect signatures. So they went out and collected signatures and they submitted the signatures and the city uh, secretary, secretary uh, accepted those signatures and said there are enough signatures here yes. to, uh, to have this vote, this repeal vote. And then the city attorney looked at the signatures and said, too many of these signatures are fraudulent. Yes. Uh, so it, you can't do this. The Texas Supreme Court has said that was too late. The city secretary accepted the signatures. And if the city council wanted to examine those signatures, they should have had a different procedure but they shortcut the procedure by letting the city attorney declare these signatures invalid. They should have declared the city signatures invalid. And since they didn't, then the acceptance of the signatures by the secretary stands. Do you so, think I'm being too hard on the Supreme Court of Texas? I think they have... They found a, a loophole? They found a loophole. They found a technical well, reason to uh, do this. Let's tell you about Houston. Uh, the, uh, they have an out lesbian mayor, Anise Parker, terrific. Uh, but in 1985, they also voted on gay rights there, and they, d they repealed it by a four to one margin. Wait, that was 30 years ago? Well, uh, four to, I'm just saying four to one margin. I remember this vividly. Uh, the KKK openly campaigned against it, along with uh, the Republican Party and uh, fundamentalist churches, including African-American churches, who well, were all in a nice coalition against us. Well, I can't uh, swear that uh, the outcome will be different this time, oh, but I oh, will predict it will be closer. Oh, I, I, think, <laughs> I think you're right. But yeah, they have to either repeal it or put it to a vote. That's the only choice from the court. Okay. All right, uh, in, in, uh, in Reno, uh, the city hall flew the rainbow flag on Sunday as part of uh, uh, Pride Weekend. And t they took down the American flag to do so. This caused an uproar. Uh, the city was apparently supposed to run the two flags simultaneously. So or they put, the, put the rainbow flag somewhere else. The mayor of Reno, who's a gay rights supporter and marched in the Pride Parade, had simply said, 
you know, put up the rainbow flag. And so the city employees took down the American flag on the flagpole over City Hall and put up the rainbow flag. Yep. And the mayor says, I, I didn't mean that. It's an insult to our veterans, she said. <laughs> well, well. Uh, how about all is solved, how, I think. How about those Boy Scouts? Maybe we should talk about them. Let's do. Okay. Well, as, as we told you, I mean, for, you know, first it was the executive committee, now it's the executive board that was polled nationally, and 79% of them voted in favor of allowing openly gay scout leaders, uh, it, it, but not uh, requiring it. Uh, in other words, if you're a religious troop, which is the majority of the troops, you can still discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation. Before we get into the, some of the problems with it, um, it also protects all of the employees who work for the, yes. for the Boy Scouts. That's, that's good. Now, uh, I, I wasn't crazy about the way uh, Bob Gates set this up. Oh, I, I listened to his statement. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, well, you know, we can't always do what we want to do. We're yeah. going to get sued. The world is not the way we would necessarily like it to be. We can't let the policy of exclusion stand because we're, we're going to lose lawsuits. And Mike Signorelli wrote a column about how, what a dangerous precedent this is because it makes the religious exemption seem reasonable. Because a lot of people are going to look at this and say, well, yeah, yeah, if, you know, if the Catholic okay. troops and the Mormon troops. But the Catholic Church, by the way, is fine with it. It's very much like the Salt Lake solution for the non-discrimination bill that they passed uh, earlier, which does have a broad religious exemption in it. And people are very conflicted about whether we should be happy about a non-discrimination law in Salt Lake City since it is uh, full of a religious yes, it exemption. Is, it is very much like Salt Lake City, except the Mormon church is deeply <laughs> troubled by the Boy Scouts decision. I wonder Quote, if Gates, if, I wonder if Gates uh, feels blindsided by this. Yes. Now, part, well, yes. part of the reason their no noses are out of joint is that their elders go on vacation in July <laughs> and they weren't around for this. Yeah, so, I don't think that's the well, whole reason. Well, they, they said it, they brought it up. So that's part of the reason, and, they, and they're also saying, the, the Mormons are saying, they're 40% of the Boy Scouts. It is the youth I, program for Mormon boys. They are also saying, we're in 170 countries, and their scouting is not all over the world, and we might just decide to have our own youth program. Yeah, well, there is an alternative uh, already to the Boy Scouts that is anti-gay, that was set up specifically <laughs> to be anti-gay, and the leader of that wrote this long uh, analysis of this new policy and how wrong it was, and the Mormons might just transfer into that policy, that uh, new organization, and expand it around the world. Well, I like the fact that HRC was was as soon as the uh, the decision came down, they said this is really not enough. I mean, that was encouraging that mm -hmm. HRC gets that, and as opposed to groups like uh, Glad, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, which just praised it. You know, they work with Jennifer Tyrrell, T Y R R E L, who's a lesbian uh, den mother, who you know was was one of the people pushing for this and she called the decision historic. Uh, Eric Schneiderman, who uh, was bringing the lawsuit on behalf of the gay scout Pascal uh, Tesler, uh, who was going to serve as who was serving as a leader in New York, um, you know, says he's ending his investigation against the scouts because of this decision. The Mormons and this guy who's the leader of the alternate organization are concerned that the religious exemption which the National Executive Board has now accepted and written into policy cannot stand because the Supreme Court case 15 years ago, the Dale case, that said the Boy Scouts had the right to discriminate because they had a moral standard that was intrinsic to their being that uh, was anti-gay mm -hmm. and that they were a private organization that could do that, that that will be under attack now because clearly they have changed their moral standard by allowing uh, out gay scouts and leaders. And so the right wing and the Mormons are concerned that that will undermine any religious exemption that's written yes. now. This happened to the golf world too, as you remember. There was a guy who had a, a disability and he wanted to play with a golf cart on the pro tour. And the Supreme Court of the United States is questioning him and, and they said, is walking integral to the game? It looks like you let guys on the senior tour play with carts. 
It's true. And they said, oh, well, yes, we do. So the Supreme Court on that basis said, well, then it's not integral and you're going to have to let them use a card. And that is exactly the right wing position on this and why the Mormons may withdraw from the Boy Scouts altogether. Right. Uh, nonetheless, the Book of Mormon, the hit Broadway play, yeah. will open in Salt Lake City <laughs> shortly, and who I know, knows, that may change everything. I know a lot of Utahns who have uh, traveled to New York just to see it. And Eagle Scouts... And paid a pretty penny. <laughs> out gay Eagle Scouts who've been kicked out of the organization are now coming back in to sign up as uh, leaders. Uh, may not be enough to make up for the Mormons who are leaving, but... Now, some groups, we are. some groups think the Holy Father can settle all this. Uh, the, you know, the Pope is coming to America. He's coming Don't to, hold he's your coming breath. to New York and, and Philadelphia. So D Dignity, the gay Catholic group, my old outfit when I was a kid, and GLAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, quite a, tree, a duo there, wrote to the Pope seeking a meeting uh, to hasten justice around the globe. Uh, they want to tell him that church teachings uphold systemic institutionalized discrimination and if it's convenient for you we know you're very busy the letter does say this uh we we would like to have a little meeting about this if you don't mind uh well just to show that it's not all uh, unilateral in that direction and i think the pope has been disingenuous in his uh comments about Completely. who am I to judge. Completely. He's also compared transgender uh, to uh, nuclear war. But told a transgender person who met with him that uh, God loves you and we accept well, you. Well, God loves everybody. God, they always say that. <laughs> we're, we're interested in a little more specificity here. Uh, there are some Christian-based colleges in this country, uh, an elite set of colleges that are very uh, wedded to their anti-gay doctrine, but several of them have just made a change. Uh, Goshen College and Eastern Mennonite University have adopted a non-discrimination policy that includes sexual orientation and gender identity. What hath God wrought? And Hope College has uh, adopted a sexual orientation non-discrimination uh, policy. They are, uh, they adopted these after the Supreme Court marriage ruling so that they could treat their employees and their students uh, equally. Because they might want to hold on to their employees well, and the, they might want to attract students who don't agree with them on the old ways. But they are defying their denominations in adopting well, these policies. and that's happened at some of the Catholic colleges as well. Yeah, less so, I think, but oh, no, well, for, maybe not. Fordham, maybe not. Notre Dame. Yeah. All right. Somewhat. All right. Okay. All right, let's do, let's deal with some of these uh, transgender stories and let's. Uh, uh, no, you don't well, want to. Well, we got uh, we got the. Uh, oh lovely, yeah, do do them. Do Alabama has uh, some interesting news. Please. A judge in Alabama, after the Supreme Court same-sex marriage decision, in the case of a lesbian couple who uh, brought suit in Alabama and prompted uh, some of the marriage rulings there. We have a picture of the plaintiffs there and their yes, kids. Yes. Uh, Kim McCann and Carrie Searcy and their son, Kaya Searcy, nine years old. Uh, the judge has approved a second parent adoption of the boy born to Kim uh, and they have fought for this uh, uh, legalization of both of them as mothers for four years. Yes. Yes. So congratulations to them. Meanwhile, the Campaign for Southern Equality has surveyed Alabama and found that of their 67 counties, 53 are complying with the Supreme Court order and are issuing marriage licenses to both opposite sex and same sex couples. 13 counties have shut down their marriage license bureaus and are issuing licenses to no one. And are still getting paid yes. for doing nothing. And one county is a little up in the air, seems to be opening, open and issuing licenses only to straight couples, uh, but uh, a little unclear at the moment. But well, that, I'd call that a high compliance rate the, in the, Alabama. <laughs> well, the probate judges are balking and saying that uh, it says that they may issue licenses, not that they shall issue them. Uh, and they're, you know. 
In Indiana, a clerk was fired for refusing same-sex uh, marriage license and is suing for violation of religious freedom. I don't think you're going to get very far with that. And Ted Cruz. Well, she's citing Leviticus just the way Mike Bloomberg did when he exactly. fought same-sex marriage. Exactly. And Ted Cruz, looking desperately for something to ignite his presidential campaign, uh, promises he will rein in judicial tyranny with term limits and retention uh, elections. I would think that the... More traitorous words from you, Ted. I would think that the Congress... and Would you have to change the Constitution to do that? Yes, you would. Yeah, uh, same-sex marriages began in Saipan, the Northern Mariana Islands, and the Virgin Islands. Yep. Uh, in Michigan, six lawyers on our side are seeking $2 million from the state in court costs. And in Missouri, the Eighth Circuit awarded $28,000 to the our plaintiff, to the attorneys for our side in an appeal. $28,000, $2 million. Well, that the was Michigan just one appeal. It was a Mich lot, a Michigan lot. attorneys did a lot of work, they and did. theirs was one of the cases at the uh, Supreme Court, and there were local people who did not have the support of the national organizations very much, and they deserved it. Okay. Uh, and, speaking of, and speaking of couples, uh, we have a bunch of our Congress members, 125 of them apparently now, uh, calling on the State Department uh, to deny spousal visas to diplomats from countries that won't recognize same-sex spouses of our diplomats. Yeah, we've talked about this recently, how there are countries around the world that are refusing to recognize uh, the same-sex spouses of our diplomats who are assigned to those countries. And the State Department has not been entirely supportive. They have uh, bowed to the countries which are refusing the same-sex spouses. They've uh, assigned people elsewhere. They to discourage you from going to some of these countries yes. if you're gay. And that's a real problem with your career. That limits uh, where you can be assigned and, and how much you can advance in your Didn't career. Didn't they hear the President of the United States in Kenya? <laughs> Uh, now, we have openly gay uh, ambassadors in Vietnam and the Dominican Republic and elsewhere, uh, Australia. Even even Bush uh, appointed uh, yeah, some. Yeah, so that's all good, but uh, there are countries that won't accept their spouses. So uh, the 125 members of Congress wrote a letter to the State Department and said, hey, if they're the doing that to our diplomats, we should do it to theirs. We should retaliate. We should uh, hold them accountable. And we should say, if you will not accept the same-sex spouse of our diplomat, yes. then we're going to refuse a visa to the spouse of your diplomat. And if John Kerry won't do it, we're going to get your boss to make you do it. <laughs> Well, we got a little time to do that. All right, now let's uh, let us uh, look at these transgender stories. Well, let's let's start in Virginia. Okay. This is a colorful case. So it's a trans student uh, uh, is suing for the right to use the right to use the restroom according to his uh, gender identity. Gavin Grimm. We have a picture of Gavin outside the courthouse there. There, yeah. there he is. Um, but the judge in the case, federal judge Robert uh, Dumar, D-O-U-M-A-R, 84. Uh, said that, uh, first of all, tra being trans is a mental disorder, and he dismissed a, uh, using Title IX of the Education Act, which bans discrimination based on sex. He says this is not a sex discrimination case, despite the case law on the other side. Uh, the Justice Department has issued a, a statement of interest in the case. Lawyers for Gavin say that the Supreme Court has, uses, they say the Supreme Court uses gender and sex interchangeably, um, but the Gloucester County School Board wants Gavin to uh, wants everybody to use single sex uh, restrooms based on their biological gender, and and Gavin should use a separate you know room someplace uh, because he doesn't fit in. The judge, when you read the judge's opinion, he is way off the reservation on a lot of stuff. He says you got proof that holding your urine in can lead to an infection. Because this is one of the things Gavin said. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to the bathroom at school. He also said, where the U.S. is going <laughs> scares me. Really scares me. Yeah. So Gavin and will fight on. This will be appealed. And High Feldblum, the head of the EEOC, says uh, the judge's refusal to declare this a case of sex discrimination will be overturned. Let's hope so. Let's do. Um, in Colorado, the uh, Transgender Legal Defense Network is demanding that the Aetna Insurance Company cover uh, surgery for a trans woman 
uh, state law in Colorado mandates uh, equal protection in, in coverage of these things. And Aetna says, and you're, you'll be familiar with this from dealing with your insurance company, it's not covered in your policy. And your policy specifically refuses any such coverage. Uh, that litigation will continue. Uh, in a oh, terrible uh, story of uh, violence in Fresno, California, another transgender woman, Casey Haggard, 66 years old. There's, uh, you know, security footage of this online. She's called over to a car by some guy, uh, and when she gets over to the car, uh, he stabs her dead, stabs her dead in the neck. He didn't even get out of the car. He just stabs her and then they drive off. Okay. And she is, uh, you see her stagger on the street and fall down and people walk around her. Well, we got a couple of sports stories that to some extent deal with transgender. Yep. Uh, first, the Court of Arbitration for Sport, which is based in Switzerland, ruled that limiting female competitors based on testosterone levels is not necessary, necessarily, uh, to ensure fair competition. They want to conduct a two-year study on this. Now, they gave the International Association of Athletics uh, these two years. This is the case of Duti Chand, 19 of India. Do we have that picture up? Uh, who was a sprinter. Uh, who was barred last July after winning two gold medals at the Asian Junior Athletics Championship. Uh, now, she was tested and found to have uh, elevated testosterone levels. She was told she could have surgery or take hormones, and she said, come on, the, I'm outra- a regular human being. That's I'm outrageous. not going to start doing well, that. Well, here are the rules. Under the rules, you have to a, a female has to have levels under the lower uh, bound of what's normal for males. That's, that's the current rule oh, that, that, is, that was just challenged. Men have testosterone, women have testosterone, men have estrogen, and these levels vary. So at least they're going to study because that's what they need to do is really survey everybody to get a better handle on what people's hormone levels are and what effect it does or does not have on sports performance like this. And what about Jenna Marie Kroc? This is uh, another picture we have quite here. A development. This is a champion power lifter known originally as Matt Croc Krozlechesi. Croc Zaleski. Thank you. Uh, now, Matt is uh, now identifying as a transgender woman, Janae Marie Croc. Gender fluid. Yes. Here's how she describes herself online transgender, gender fluid, alpha male. Girly girl lesbian <laughs> in a male body. Got it? This is, uh, uh, <laughs> where the U.S. is going scares me. That's what that judge would say to that. That is quite a picture. In fact, uh, there was one commenter who suggested it might have been photoshopped, but I looked more widely at the Instagram page, and there are a lot of different pictures, and it's clear that that is what she looks like. And it's, uh, uh, you know, we are evolving. Yes. And well, things are not as binary as they were. We are not evolving in Lewis, Lewis Delaware, L-E-W-E-S. Is that how you say it? Uh, the, uh, this was at the Wolfneck parking area. And the park police arrested 12 men for public lewdness. And then WBOG television posted their names and their towns. These men vary from 49 to 82. What were they arrested for? They were cruising. They were loitering for sex. It doesn't even say they were having sex. They were just, I mean, who's not looking? I mean, well, you know, but many, I mean, come on, what are you supposed to do? Uh, You know, look, I I know that, uh, you know, some, uh, you're not supposed to frighten the horses. These, these, you can call these public places, but, you know, you have to go out of your way to see these things most of the time. Uh, You know, so it's, but, and these people haven't been convicted of anything. Does W. BOG post everybody who's arrested for a misdemeanor and put their names in their towns on, on, on the site. It's, it's just public shaming. It is. Uh, and we thought something was not such public shaming in uh, Decatur, Georgia. Pastor mm. Dewey Smith of the House of Hope Greater... It's got a long name. In Travelers De- yes. Rest Church gave a sermon that uh, went viral online, uh, calling the church hypocritical, uh, uh, 
you know, how can we employ gay people in the choir and right. as choir masters and then demean them in our sermons? Well, and this, in fact, should we take a look at yeah, a little bit of it? Let's watch. just show about 30 seconds of this. And God said to me, here's the problem. You guys in the church can be so hypocritical. He said, in the African-American church, you really got to be careful. I said, what do you mean? He said, because you are guilty of condemning the Supreme Court system and preaching against something. But if you look at half of our choirs, and a great number of our artists that we call abominations, and we call demons, we demonize and dehumanize the same people that we use, and we don't say nothing about the gay choir director because he's good for business. As long as the choir sound good, I ain't saying that. It goes on, and it's, it, it went viral. It goes on for five minutes. Yeah. But the church issued a statement on Monday saying, well, he was taken out of context. And he doesn't support same-sex marriage, which he didn't say he did, uh, or LGBT rights. But, I mean, this was a, it, it sounded like a terrific indictment of the church's hypocrisy. It was a wonderful sermon. I, I urge you to go to YouTube and look for it. Pastor Dewey Smith, D-E-W-E-W. -E -W. Uh, and I, what I noticed in this supposed backtrack is it wasn't Dewey Smith who, right. who issued a statement saying, uh, you took me out of context. It was uh, the church hierarchy that was nervous well, about it and issued a statement. If you watch the tape. You will see some people nodding their heads, yes, 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 and some people going, mm, mm, mm. But my, our friend Tony Halbert, who uh, writes a lot about the uh, black church and gospel music, said, it means the same thing, <laughs> meaning it means agreement, even if you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what well, do I know? Well, it can, yes. What do I know? Yes. I, I'm I should hope you know that. Uh, and I would wind up with our national news by saying next week, Thursday, August 6th, debate on Fox. <laughs> okay. Republican we're candidates. Here we are promoting Fox News, for God's sakes. Well, we're going to be the scapegoats again, and that's okay. always entertaining. International news. Yes. In Poland, the lower house passed a gender accordance act uh, submitted uh, by the out transgender member of the parliament, Anna Grodzka. Uh, no one involved in gender recognition uh, needs to be involved in the gender recognition process, but the applicant, no medical intervention is required. This is a trend around the world. Mm -hmm. Still has to go through the Senate there and be signed by the president, who is not a liberal. No. So we'll see how far it gets, but it's a, it's a great uh, proposal. In Spain, how do we feel about the age of consent raised from 13 to 16 and the age of consent for marriage raised from 14 to 16? Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily, I'm not against that. I, I just want to make sure it's equal for gays and straights. Seems to be. Or non-gay people, as we're supposed to say. In yes. Nigeria, uh, John Kerry. Uh, or Ray as Chris Matthews would say, same-sex people. <laughs> the same sex. Okay, come on, Chris. He's a jerk. He is. Uh, in Nigeria, John Kerry raised LGBT issues in a meeting with uh, President uh, Buhari at the State Department. Uh, you know, good luck, Jonathan uh, was the one who signed the draconian anti-gay law there in 2014. Uh, the U.S. gives $200 billion in aid to Nigeria annually. Uh, Chris Matthews, by the way, is now taking S Trump very seriously as a presidential candidate. Yes. He, he's so, on to something. Um, There's something happening. He's leading in the polls. Yes. Okay. But, you know, they're coming after him. Uh, Taipei, Taiwan. The city government asked the Constitutional Court to legalize marriage. They have registered civil partnerships now, uh, and those partners get some benefits. But the city government wants same-sex marriage legalized uh, nationally. And two more states are on board in Mexico. <laughs> Well, they're moving forward there. They're, they're making great progress. And uh, Channel 4 in Britain, which is one of their major broadcasters, uh, broadcast last week a documentary called Hunted, Gay and Afraid in Uganda. 47-minute documentary. I tried to watch it, but uh, it wouldn't play in this country. We've got about four minutes left, so let's run through some things. We, okay. we the, the World Health Organization did issue a report on transgender women. 
uh, and one uh, enormously higher in 15 countries that actually ask you if you are transgender, and enormously higher rates of HIV, including among sex workers. If you are a sex worker and you're trans, you have not, you're nine times more likely to have HIV. And they say that governments have to start passing laws allowing trans folks to function fully in society. Call the stop the presses. Um, you, you read the big story about hepatitis C. Insurance companies aren't covering it uh, for the for the eighty four thousand dollar drug. That's awful, and it's getting out of hand. Um, and shall we go to entertainment news? Sure. Let's show them the trailer of the Greg Louganis documentary that's airing on HBO yeah. next week. Tuesday at uh, Tuesday, August fourth. We saw it Ten last at night at a screening. It's really good. Really. Uh, it's uh, just under an hour and a half. It's called Back on Board, Greg Louganis, and it's very thoughtful and very human and very affecting. And here is a minute of it. And here he is, Greg Louganis. What an athlete! Greg Louganis is your goal. Everybody's wondering, well, when is this kid going to falter? I didn't feel welcome in diving. There was homophobia. Some of my teammates were calling me fag. Had he been a straight athlete, he would have made millions. I was HIV positive. The best diver in the world is going through all this. I just wanted to hold the blood in. My name is Craig Luganis. I'm gay, and I'm HIV positive. They'll say, an Olympic gold medal is worth millions. That's not the reality. Sometimes you have a good month. Sometimes you have nothing. He reinvented himself. I'm sharing my experience, sharing what I learned, one step at a time. Highly recommended, uh, walks us through his whole life, yep. very interesting. Uh, less recommended is Amazing Grace, the new musical set in the mid-1700s mid about John Newton, who was a slave trader, played by Josh Young there, uh, who uh, wrote the hymn Amazing Grace when he got religion. Uh, it's mostly like a 19th century melodrama, very tedious, but it has such a powerful last half hour with Chuck Cooper there on the left as a man who raised him, John Newton, and sold him into slavery, <laughs> which is like, and then this is the scene where they're trying to reconcile, which I found very moving. And the song is pretty good. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> song. Uh, I caught I Am Kate, the first episode of the E! series about Caitlyn Jenner. I thought it was good. I, I think she's trying to do a serious job. They're trying to do a serious job. Good. And I thought it was good. The Emmy Awards are September 20th, as yes. a viewer pointed out. And we're going to have a guest in beforehand to do some predictions. Yep. And uh, as I Am Kate is airing on E!, I Am Jazz is airing <laughs> on the Learning Channel, which is the story of the transgender teen, which hasn't gotten nearly enough notice, but is very moving and very interesting and very rich with her family and friends and her attempts to negotiate teenhood as a transgender uh, girl. And that is very good. You might want to try to catch that. And if you come to New York, you must see The Absolute Brightness of Leonard Pelkey, with James, uh, James Lacine wrote and is, and is the one star in. Uh, at the West Side Theater, I saw it off off Broadway, and it's terrific. Runs through October fourth, and we will see you next week. We hope. Thank you. <laughs>